This is the Congress of Neurological Surgeons Neurosurgery 100 video series. Uh, this issue is on Parkinson's disease. I'm Andres Lozano. I'm a functional neurosurgeon at the University of Toronto, and this uh, video was prepared with the assistance of Chris Connor, who is a functional neurosurgery fellow at the University of Toronto. So Parkinson's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative disorder um, and about 0.3% of the population has Parkinson's disease. Uh, it has a genetic uh, etiology in approximately 5% and the other 95% are so so-called sporadic cases. With increasing age of the population, there's an increased incidence of Parkinson's disease. The diagnosis of Parkinson's disease is characterized by a series of signs and symptoms uh, under the acronym of TRAP. And TRAP stands for tremor, uh, rigidity, akinesia, and postural and gait disturbances. There is a long prodrome before people develop the signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease, perhaps uh, 10 years, and then they start developing the bradykinesia, rigidity, and tremor. And then as time goes on, uh, they start taking medications. And initially they respond with a good honeymoon period, but as time goes on, uh, they become less and less responsive. Additional problems arise with involuntary movements, drug-induced dyskinesias, and with uh, neurologic and psychiatric uh, problems, including autonomic dysfunction, gait, swallowing dysfunction, depression, uh, and so on. The pathophysiology of the illness is that there are synuclein deposits, these are intracellular deposits uh, in many neurons, predominantly in the substantia nigra pars compacta dopaminergic neurons, and these cause the degeneration and death of these dopamine producing neurons. The dopamine deficiency state causes dysfunction in the basal ganglia circuitry from cortex to striatum to pallidal output thalamus and back to cortex. We assess the severity of the Parkinson's disease using the Unified Parkinson's Disease Rating Scale, or UPDRS. This is a multi-component scale, which has at least six parts. Part one includes an evaluation of mentation, behavior, and mood. Part two involves a self-evaluation of the activities of daily living. Part three is an extensive clinician-scored monitored motor evaluation. Part four is the complications of therapy. Part five is Hohn and Yar staging for the severity of Parkinson's disease. And part six is a Schwab and England ADL score. The mainstay of treatment for Parkinson's patients is replacing the dopamine uh, deficiency either in the form of levodopa or of dopamine agonist or uh, giving levodopa in combination with a drug that will increase the half-life of levodopa, such as monoamine oxidase inhibitors or COMT inhibitors. When patients uh, take uh, levodopa, their blood levels uh, uh, will up, go up and down with each dose, and uh, when they are uh, early on in their illness, they're getting good therapeutic benefit uh, with each dose, but as the illness progresses, the doses start wearing off, there's a delayed on, and there is an onset of drug-induced involuntary movements or dyskinesias, such that initially they have a good response with most of the day responding to, to levodopa and being on, but then as time goes on, they have progressively more off time where they're akinetic and rigid, and progressively more time with dyskinesias so that the therapeutic window when they're well uh, gets smaller and smaller. It is at this stage that uh, uh, people are good candidates for DBS when they start developing these motor fluctuations between on and off and developing dyskinesias. The DBS involves implanting of uh, intracerebral leads and a pulse generator that is programmable uh, into, uh, into the chest. In, back in 2001, uh, there was a large study of DBS of the globus pallidus and the subthalamic nucleus, and at baseline, uh, the patients that were enrolled had uh, off uh, time approximately half of the time, uh, with a quarter of the time on uh, without dyskinesia, so good, good on time about a quarter of the time, and on with dyskinesia about another quarter of the time. After DBS surgery, 
the off time uh, diminished from 50% to about 20% of the day and they had good on time about 75% of the time and on with disc disease a short amount of time. So this very large increase in good on time from 27% to 74% is the main reason that DBS of the globus pallidus and the subthalamic lymphius was approved for Parkinson's disease. In evaluating patients for this type of surgery, it's important to do a levodopa challenge test to uh, assess what the potential benefit of DBS might be. The, the levodopa challenge test is done by bringing the patients in off their medications at their worst off state, giving them about one and a half times their normal dose of levodopa and measuring the benefit that they achieve. It is this benefit that they achieve with levodopa that should be achievable and serves as a benchmark for what should be achieved with DBS. In addition, an assessment of uh, what side effects patients have, their total levodopa dosage, uh, an assessment of their gait and cognitive issues, and a psychology and psychiatry uh, assessment are performed in many centers that are evaluating these patients. There is controversy as to which is the best target uh, for uh, Parkinson's disease with both the GPI and STN being used. The subthalamic nucleus uh, tends to be the favorite target worldwide because it is able to reduce levodopa dosage to a greater extent and because it's less battery drain. However, uh, GPI might be better in patients who have cognitive or uh, psychiatric risks. So this was a brief overview of uh, Parkinson's disease patient selection and um, uh, outcomes uh, for uh, DBS surgery, uh, the details of uh, the techniques and more detailed uh, outcome measures uh, will need to be covered uh, in uh, another uh, session. Thank you very much for your attention.